Hello there and welcome to another video. Just like my Kenny versus Spenny video, which was quite successful, I am going to do a top 10 best and a top 10 worst episodes list. This time it's going to be about rewards. I'm going to go through the 10 which I think are the best and the 10 which I think are the worst. I'm going to give my reasons for each individual choice and so on and so forth. <laughs> but before we begin, I'm going to go through some honorable mentions. The best rewards episodes which just didn't make the cut. Ones which I think are deserving of a mention nonetheless. So for our honourable mentions, we have Series 3 Heat C. The reason why this just didn't get chosen is because, well, mainly because it's personal bias. Series 3 Heat C is actually the first ever episode of Robles I ever saw, and so it has a very special place in my heart. I absolutely do love this episode. However, I cannot deny there are some weaker elements. Uh, some of the robots just aren't very good, such as Spike and Binky. But nonetheless, it still has a lot of memorable moments, like obviously Razor breaking down against Agrobot, uh, Blade being a rather surprising semi-finalist, and overall there are a lot of creative designs in this episode. Backstab of one thing is a very creative design, all things considered, it almost looks like a prototype of Dominator 2. Uh, another honourable mentions is Series 8 Heat A. Uh, series 8, in my opinion, is a very underrated series. Whilst I was quite negative towards the reboot series overall, I do think Series 8 did a decent job at bridging the gap between the old and new. It has a very good selection of robots, has some fantastic battles one after the other. It's mainly just disappointing in the second half, as the round robin rounds draw on, a lot of the battles sort of slow down a bit and they're just not as entertaining, especially when you have BMO flipping uh, terahertz over very quickly without much of a fight, or off just being knocked out by Carbide and Heat Final in just one blow. It's not very impressive, all things considered, but it still has a lot of great moments and a lot of great shocks, such as Razor dropping out in round one. Another one is Series 10 Heat B. Series 10 Heat B is absolutely destructive, it's absolutely amazing, it's a great selection of robots. Uh, whilst I'm not necessarily a fan of the reboot, you know, having all the great robots in one heat and only one really actually gets the grand farming and you have several heats which have got a lot of lame robots i do still think this is a very good heat nonetheless the battle between carbide big nipper and gabriel goes down is probably one of my favorites of all time however the problem with this heat is once again it does sort of drag on a bit and when it drags on you start to see a lot of flaws with it uh, especially with the heat final once again it is one of the worst heat files you can imagine just one hit and that's it uh extreme one annihilator one um this Annihilator is wonderful in every shape. Uh, it has loads of great robots, so such as Hidden Disc, Pussycat, Arnold, Thermidor, Exterminator. It subverts expectations all the time. You know, you think this robot is going to do well, but then it just gets dominated by the other robots. You think this robot is going to do poorly, and yet it goes on to the you know final or the final three. This is a massive Annihilator, and one that actually goes for each round, as opposed to having one robot drop out. Truly amazing, really good. And my final honorable mention is the Series 3 Grand Final. I love this Grand Final. Every battle is great and unique in their own way. It has the first ever out of the arena with Chaos 2 flipping uh, Firestorm out. Uh, the only disadvantage really is that there's no third place playoff, uh, which is a real shame. But nonetheless, we have three really great fights, wonderful battles, and truly a wonderful end to what I consider a wonderful series. Now, before further ado, let's get to our number 10 worst. At number 10, I won't lie, I had a bit of difficulty choosing like the bottom few worst episodes, mainly because there's quite a few that are quite interchangeable. I was tempted to put the Battle of the Stars episode 1 on because every fight in that is basically the same. I was also tempted to put uh, World Series episode 2 on because it really does suffer in the later half of the episode but as i was looking through those episodes i kind of found the battle of the stars episode one to not be as bad as a lot of people would say it was it still has a lot of explosive action a lot of tires exploding it's wonderful in my opinion um and with world series episode two whilst there's a lot of awful awful moments it has a lot of great moments it's really a 50 50 episode where you have half of it really good and the other half just absolutely awful so you know, it's a bit of a mixed bag with those two. However, Series 6 Heat H is not necessarily a mixed bag. Series 6 is a wonderful series. Almost every Heat has something brilliant going for it. Heat H, on the other hand, just feels like a massive step down in quality. It's the infamous Heat where Spawn again doesn't work and somehow wins a Heat. Um, 
This is just an embarrassing display from the series. Like, how is it that they got a decent robot in Series 5 with a few gremlins here and there, a decent robot in Extreme 2 and a decent robot in Series 7, yet yeah, Series 6 they just had this dreadful robot. Spawn Again Series 6 version is probably the worst, one of the worst robots in my opinion. It just sucks. You know, aside from being a very ugly looking robot, it just didn't work. And somehow it won. Um, and I, I think that's really aggravated me over the years. It isn't a help that a lot of the robots in this particular episode are just not very interesting. Supernova is probably the only outlier here. It's an amazing robot and it's a shame it didn't win. And in my opinion, it kind of got unlucky. You know, Spawn again certainly shouldn't have been in the heat final. I mean, it barely moved in its second round battle, so you know, there's a lot of debate whether or not it probably should have been counted out and spam should have been sent through. Um, yeah, like, really the problem with this episode comes down to one robot, and that's Spawn Again. Spawn Again absolutely ruins this entire episode. You know, um, there's not a lot of great fights in it, a lot of very dull, not very memorable robots. It's a very very boring episode once you get down to it because spawn again doesn't work supernova really just takes out opponents in one massive hit and then that's it and a lot of the opponents aren't very you know memorable or interesting it's a very very mixed bag in my opinion and for our number 10 best it's the extreme 2 annihilator the Annihilators are, in general are a lot of fun. Um, there are a few weak ones, obviously. You know, Nickelodeon, for example, has a very weak one, but at least that one is so bad it's kind of funny. And obviously Extreme Two, Extreme 1's uh, second Annihilator with Panic Jack and uh, Spirit of Nightmare and Disco Inferno was very disappointing with two robots withdrawing from it. But at least they still made up for it for having very good fights. Extreme 2 Annihilate, on the other hand, is just beautiful. It is absolute anarchy. You have a great selection of robots, all varied in their own ways. You have a big heavy spinner, you have a flipper, you have a crusher, you know, you have all these different types of robots. And, you know, the destruction level in this particular Annihilator is massive, especially when you see Major Tom in, I believe, round three or four, just being torn to pieces. And once again, this is one of those annihilators that kind of subverts your expectations. You expect certain robots to do really well, but then they don't do very well. This is a debut of Type Thing 2, who would eventually become a Series 7 champion, and yet it drops out in Round 1 very easily by being flipped over. You know, um, Major Tom somehow manages to make it to the final three, and Can Opener wins the Annihilator. Uh, Thermidor does a really fantastic job and in my opinion it really makes up for its really disappointing run in Series 6 and Series 5 for that matter. And honestly this is just a fun episode. Everything about it just hits the right notes. Each round is unique and varied in their own way. Some are very quick but some are very stylized, some are very destructive. The final battle between Can Open and Thermidor is such a tight battle that when it gets to the final few seconds of Can Open it manages to just push and pit. Uh, Thermidor, it is wonderful. The house robots get a lot of action as well, as I mentioned. Uh, Major Tom gets completely destroyed by Matilda and Mr. Psycho, and it is beautiful in every sense of the word. It's almost like a remake of the Series 4 episode where Major Tom made its debut and had his head cut off by um, Shunt. This is just such a great, great battle. A uh, great, great set of battles, I should say. Great episode. Great selection of robots and honestly it's wonderful final is what really makes it truly one of the best episodes in my opinion. One of the best, certainly. I think when it comes to Robot Wars fans, one of the biggest issues they have is that they only really think about certain moments when it comes to certain episodes or certain robots. You know, those particular moments is what makes it shine out and as a result it's great forever and all bad forever. They don't ever look at the full picture and as a result they end up judging the whole product based on those one moments or those highlights, I guess you'd say. Series 7 Heat D is one particular case. Here, most people think about it as the episode where gravity completely destroys the arena by throwing a Hydra on top of the arena, breaking a camera, and 
you know, causing all this destruction, flipping dead metal over. It is so great, guys. But then you realize there's an entire episode in this and you realize this episode is not very good. Aside from the, op- the one of the mellows, which is the gravity mellow with four and uh, which was the Tartarus, I believe, and, you know, who daft the bath on it? Who daft the bad? Um, <laughs> and uh, Hydra, you know, and also the heat final, this episode is just painfully boring. There is very little in this episode. And what's really shocking is some of the competitors in this are quite good in their own right. 13 Black, which is the seeds in this episode, just doesn't work in this. It, it just felt like it was just dawdling most of the time. Um, the alien, once again, a very memorable and beloved robot, doesn't really do anything and dies very quickly. Everything about this episode just feels wrong and nothing really works. The side event is awful. Everything about this episode feels awful. And what you get is two great battles or two great moments, I guess you could say, sandwiched between an entire episode of shit. That is basically what Series 7 D feels like. It is only memorable because of particular moments, not because of the entire episode. If people really want to judge this episode, well, watch the entire thing. Tell me if it's actually good and then come back. Because if you're only judging it because of one or two battles, then you're not really judging the entire episode, are you? It is painfully boring. It is awful in every sense of the word. A lot of the robots are quite forgettable, honestly. And really, only the heat final and the second melee are any good. Everything else sucks. On the flip side, you have the Series 10 Grand Final. Series 10 is really a brilliant series and it's a shame that the reboot took two seasons to actually get every good series or a decent series out um <clears throat> now the grand final ha- opens up with the 10 robot rumble which is always just wonderful but there's also the narrative theme behind it as well you have the underdog which is eruption who lost in the heat final managing to survive the rumble by tactics alone of just running and hiding <laughs> and then picking out the last competitor, which is actually quite an ingenious move, all things considered. And then we have the melees, nuts, out of the blue, just managed to pit both Behemoth and just destroy Carbide's uh, rotary chain, which means that its weapon was unable to be used. Wonderful stuff, or truly, like, the type of thing that gets you out of your seat, jumping up and down, excited. Um, the second melee is not as good, but it's still pretty decent in its own right. The you know, second round is a little bit underwhelming, but it's still pretty good. You know, Carbide destroying nuts was kind of unfortunate. I kind of wish they went up against, I don't know, one of the other, like Behemoth or something like that, or uh, uh, Eruption. We'll have to be really for it multiple times, so that would have been too boring. Um, but speaking of Eruption, Eruption and Behemoth, they fight each other, and that's pretty fun, in my opinion. Uh, oh, speaking of Mr. W loser redemption round, you know, where Rapid basically bursts into all flames and, you know, create a fog of war in the arena. Um, you know, everything about this episode is just really, really good. You know, and the grand final itself, where you have eruption on the, you know, back foot being battered and beaten by a carbide and then carbide all of a sudden gets flipped once and then flipped again and flipped so many different times and there's the visual beauty of him being flipped about and the blade stopping and the eruption fighting back you know the 180 in the battle is so gorgeous so brilliant this is wonderful or truly one of the best grand finals in my opinion um it is absolutely phenomenal now i won't lie as the years have gone by i have sort of like decreased the leveling on this uh, particular episode you know this used to be quite high up on my top 10 best now it's you know, number nine only because you know the hindsight of the uh reboot and a lot of the flaws that the reboot has to sort of rear its ugly head every so often but that doesn't take away from what is a truly wonderful episode a truly fantastic episode and one of the greatest grand finals we have ever witnessed The definition of pointless is the International League Championship. Series 3 already had the first World Championship, which is amazing in its own right. 
However, the International League Championship just feels like a weird add-on for no apparent reason. To make matters worse, pretty much none of the robots work, which result in barely any fights, and let's be honest, most of the fights are pretty crap, except for maybe a few, like Nemesis versus Deator, or Terrastralis versus Deator, I guess you could say, which was quite a nice old versus new style battle, and the final between Razor and Deator was also quite some fun. But as a whole, this is just such a pointless episode. Why bother making two international championship like events? You know, you already have the first world championship, why have the international league championship? This is all the first time we ever see the round robin format in Robot Wars, and well, already it shows just how bad of a format it is. If many of the robots not working and having to withdraw, it means that we don't really get a fair judgment on the robots in this particular competition. It just feels like an extra episode which could have been filled with something else. And considering that Series 3 had several events that are cancelled, this feels like it should have been something else and instead they just decided let's do another international championship just because. And it's just inferior in every way to the first world championship. This is just absolutely awful in every sense of the word. Barely any of the robots work, many of the battles are boring, and it's incredibly pointless as a competition. It really is so forgettable that for many years this episode was lost and wasn't any, it wasn't available anywhere. So yeah, this is such a bad episode that it barely got recorded. <laughs> Series 7 is a strange series. <clears throat> the reason why I say this is because Series 7 has some really great moments, but also some really bad moments. It's the type of series where when it's really good, it's some of the best, but when it's really bad, it's some of the worst you can imagine. And Series 7 Heat F, to many people, is one of the best. It is a fantastic heat in every sense of the word. We have a great variety of robots, and all of them are pretty good and memorable in their own right, even the ones that lost in the first round, for example. This obviously is more infamous for the new and improved Exterminator, which has a flywheel this time. The flywheel is probably the first time we ever see a robot throw another robot at the arena with said weapon. Um, and, you know, I don't think it's ever been repeated, in fact. The flywheel is so deadly, it just tears apart the opponents, throwing them about. It is so powerful and it's great to see Exterminator do really well again, like it did in Series uh, 4. This is such a fantastic heat from beginning to end. It's action-packed. Each battle feels unique and fun in their own right. Even the weaker battles, which are the Round 2 battles, are still a lot of fun. Tsunami is a fantastic uh, German robot. People were firing robots all over the place and, you know, even having a fantastic heat final against Exterminator, where it almost won. Obviously, it then made the fatal error of flipping Exterminator back over and, well, the rest is history, as they say. Heat Fs usually get a reputation for being some of the best heats in the rules, and Series 7 Heat F certainly makes that apparent. It is a beautiful episode with great robots, great battles, and everything just hits the right note in this episode. Truly one to watch out for, and truly one of the most famous and most beloved overall. So the first of our foreign Robot Wars episodes to reach any of the lists is the Nickelodeon US Championship. Nickelodeon Robot Wars is a more kid-friendly version of Robot Wars, you know, they don't call Sir Killalot Sir Killalot, they call it Sir K because apparently kill a lot is really bad um you know they <laughs> yeah they still call dead metal dead metal go figure anyway this is a u.s championship the third one in fact uh the televised one not including the 90s events and my god is this awful there's only four robots in this championship and barely any of them work so imagine that you have a championship with four robots which don't even work and the champion of this is Tyrannobot, which is one of the worst robots I have ever seen. A robot that can barely move forwards and can't even turn. That's right, a robot that can't even turn manages to win the championship. And it only wins the championship because Matilda ends up attacking its opponent and basically destroying it. Probophobia, if you're wondering. This is awful. 
absolutely awful. We have one robot which is overweight and enters the arena basically unfinished and barely working. You have two robots which are a reliability mess, and you've got one robot which is actually quite decent, but, you know, again, gets beaten up by a house robot which results in it losing. So what you get is a really shit championship, one that is pretty forgettable. I bet you most people who are fans of robots probably didn't even know that Tyranobot of all robots is a champion of robot wards. That is embarrassing to think that this thing is a champion. I hate it. I hate this episode. I really didn't enjoy trying to pick out the best battle from this episode when I did my Crown Classics form favorites in the Deal channel because this is one of those episodes that just has no quality to it whatsoever. It is bad. It is very, very bad. But there are six more that are, in my opinion, far, far worse, if you can believe it. Speaking of heat Fs, we have Series 3 Heat F. Now, I will admit, this is where a bit of my personal bias comes in. Series 3 is my second favorite series of rules, and technically speaking, Series 7 Heat F is higher in quality, let's be honest. Um, but I just love this episode so much. We have a great variety of robots, from Ming to uh, Mortis to Gravedigger to uh, Manic Mutant, and so many more. The Dark Destroyer, Tantrum 2, T2, it looks fantastic. I love more or less every fight in this, it's, it's all very much a lot of fun. Even the weaker fights like T2 versus Vector, where Vector doesn't even work and doesn't move from its spot, has some funny moments like T2 driving into the pit and just seeing whatever they put in the pit along so the tires just getting rounded up in the wheels, that's quite amusing in my opinion. But it's round two onwards where the quality really hits the high notes. We have Mortis, who's already shown off a pretty lethal potential against Ming, where the, you know, it lifted it over and the flywheel went flying off, which is one of the most memorable moments of Royal Wars. But then we have Gravedigger, the newbie, the, basically the Cassie's clone. Gravedigger, which looks beautiful, by the way, with a bronze-brown look. It flips Mortis over and then pushes it into the pit, which is wonderful and shocking, to say the very least, considering Mortis was a semi-finalist in the previous series. We also then have... Uh, we also then have T2 versus Dark Destroyer, a very controversial battle from considered, but one that is just wonderful in every sense of the word. T2 and Dark Destroyer go back and forth, and in the end, Dark Destroyer wins on a Joseph Tsun thanks to its lawnmower blade, whereas T2 didn't, which obviously is very controversial. A lot of people still think that T2 should have won. I love the look of T2, by the way. I think T2 is one of my favorite designs from the Third Wars. I love that sort of sort of train look, uh, as has often been named uh, Thomas the Tank Engine or Mohawk, and it does sort of look like that. Um, you know, there are some weaker elements, like I said, you know, the, uh, uh, oh, what was it? <laughs> the Vector versus T2 fight was pretty weak. I mean, it's a shame to see a robot not work, which is a shame because Vector does look really good, but then considering it's Series 4 qualifier, then yeah, it wasn't very good all round. And obviously, Sergeant Meikle versus Dark Destroy isn't that great, all things considered, but at least it's amusing. At least there are some highlights here and there. But really, the star of this particular show is Grave Digger. The way it throws his opponents over that flip is wonderful. It's a shame that he kind of got downgraded in Series 4 and just didn't do very well in Series 5 either. It, when we have this really good machine in Series 3, and, you know, the heat final where it's fighting you off against Dark Destroyer and you see Dead Nail come out and just slice apart Dark Destroyer. It is wonderfully memorable and it is one of the best heat finals in this series. I love this episode and whilst, yes, this is technically personal bias because I do genuinely really like Series 3 and, you know, this episode technically should be a little bit lower down on this list. I love this, and ever since I was a kid, you know, this episode was always one of my favourites to re-watch and see on TV all the time. And I even had it recorded on VHS, so, you know, that's how much I really loved this episode. And even re-watching it on Mech Plus, I genuinely loved this particular episode. When it comes to Series 5, Series 5 is an interesting series. Back in the day, a lot of people really loved Series 5, but as time has gone on, Series 5 has become very low in people's opinions. Whilst it definitely has some memorable moments, 
As a whole, the series felt like a massive step backwards compared to previous seasons. And it's not helped by the fact that a lot of episodes had a lot of really crappy robots that were somehow qualified in and didn't really do anything on screen. It didn't help that they brought back the head-to-heads from Series 3 when they had the really fantastic melee format in Series 4. And overall, a lot of the fights, a lot of the episodes just kind of sucked. And perhaps the worst offender is Series 5's Semi-Final 2. Now, the thing about Semi-Final 2 is that it had an all-star cast. It had Hypnodisc, it had Firestorm, it had Dominator, it had Weeding the Cheese, it had Panic Attack, it had Pussycat. With a all-star cast like that, you'd think you'd have quality. But instead, what you have is one of the worst episodes in Real Wars history. Almost every single fight is absolutely awful. There's only one fight which I could safely say is decent and is good, and that is Firestorm vs. Pussycat. But aside from that, every fight fucking sucks. You know, you have all these quality robots and barely any of them make a really decent dent in this. Um, you know, Hypnodisc versus Dominator, for example. Why the hell was that fight not stopped when Dominator clearly could not move? I don't care if there's, oh wow, it's moving in its circumference rule, because at the end of the day, if the robot is mobilized on one side and it's not really moving properly, I consider that immobilized. That should be counted out. And instead, they decide they should just let it continue, even though both robots clearly knew that the game was over. But alas, that's not the only issue. We have Firestorm vs. Hidden Disc in the first round, where Firestorm just gets knocked down in one hit. Nothing very good about that. Pussycat vs. Uh, Panic Attack could have been decent, but instead it's kind of dull, all things considered. Nothing really happens. Really Big Cheese vs. Dominator, once again, just a really awful fight. Dominator doesn't do very well and wins just by a fluke, which is not necessarily the most entertaining. The loser's melee is just embarrassing. Basically, Panic Attack and Wheelie Big Cheese don't really have the best maneuverability and are basically immobilized from the get-go and Firestorm just drives around bashing them and that's it. They don't really fight back and they have nothing interesting to this fight at all. It is absolutely awful. And so what you get is a really bad and low quality semi-final, which really sucks when you compare it to the other semi-final, which was really high quality. It's kind of strange how Series 5 works that way. You have one semi-final, which is one of the best episodes, probably, and one of the most memorable with fantastic fight after fantastic fight. And then you have this episode, which is just shit. <laughs> like, absolutely shit. This is awful. This is boring. This is tedious. This is just uninteresting. And, you know, I almost feel like the Hit and Disc Dominator fight was just added in to be filler. Like, they knew the fight was over, but they needed to make up time because every other fight lasted like two seconds. That's how bad this episode is. It is dull, and what's shocking is you have an all-star cast in this episode, and you'd think that that would elevate it somehow. It doesn't. Thankfully, the grand final comes after this, and the grand final does make up for this very, very poor outing. Speaking of personal bias, but at the same time this is actually considered by many as one of the best episodes of all time, Series 6 Heat A. Now, I have said many times in the past that I actually did see the Wars when it was being recorded back in the day, and Series 6 Heat A was one such heat, or, well, I saw some of them of the battles that were being filmed that day, and they were from this particular episode. Series 6 Heat A I definitely have a personal bias for, but at the same time a lot of people consider this to be the best. It is perhaps the best series opener of all time, in more ways than one. It is action packed from the get go. The first melee with Razor, Brutus, Maximus, Wasp and Raging Reality is one of the best fights to open up a series with. It has got everything, it's got an out of the arena, it's got a robot being torn apart, a wheel falling into the pits. It is brutal, it is fantastic. You have Razor crushing robots, it is brilliant. It has Sakilot drilling inside the Wasp as well, there's also that. The second melee may not be as great as the first melee, but it still is absolutely wonderful. Rough of Duel catching on fire, which by the way, um, where I was positioned when I watched it being recorded was right where the flame pit was. Well, okay, I was up on the, near the top row, but it was right where the flame pit was and I actually saw it <laughs> first hand Rough of Duel catching fire. Um, it's a wonderful sight to behold, Rough of Duel catching fire. 
brilliant in all ways in one. It's also sees of Eternal World or who lasts like five seconds. That's quite fun. Um, round two may be the weakest element probably, but it still is a lot of fun. We have the two new house robots, Mr. Psycho and Growler. We have Razor having a really tough battle against Cyrax. Um, Cyrax gets crushed and thrown into uh, both new house robots. Uh, Mr. Psycho's hammer manages to break off the light and we do much else other than that. Growler does a lot more in my opinion. Um, what else happens? Yes, there's also the Raging Reality versus Tetanus battle, which Tetanus looked like it was going to win, then it didn't. Uh, Ref Hulk falls into the pit, Raging Reality pops Tetanus out. Heat Final is brutal and destructive in every sense of the word. Matilda's Fire just smashes into Raging Reality, tearing off basically the side of it, and Razor leaves a bunch of holes. Wonderful heat with a wonderful selection of robots and truly the greatest way to open up a new series. This is how it should be done. With pure action, with everything out there, with absolute brilliance and style in every sense of the word. One of the best heat openers, in fact it is the best heat opener, up there with Sirius Owens Heat A and Truly one of the greatest episodes of Road Wars with some of the greatest battles, in particular that opening melee, one of the greatest fights of all time, I have to say. Into the top five worst now, and here's an episode which is universally hated. It's not just hated by fans, but also by Roboteers. In fact, if you go on some old Road Wars forums, there was nothing but contempt for this particular episode. Series 3 Heat L is, by all definitions, boring. It is absolutely boring. Almost none of the robots work properly in this episode. To make matters worse, a lot of the fights don't really feel like fights. You're just having one robot that is shoving a dead robot half the time. And not all of the robots are that creative or interesting. The only highlight I could probably say is Wild Willy. Um, it's such a wild robot and, it, and its fight is probably the most entertaining, but then it lost in the first round to a robot which had deflated tyres. You kind of get a gist of how low quality this particular episode is. It's astonishing going online and especially going on the archive and seeing these old archived robots forums and seeing just the absolute hatred this episode receives. There is almost not a single person who can safely say that Series 3 Heat L is a good episode. It is so despised and so bad that it is so absolutely detested by more or less everyone. However, obviously this is only number 5 on my list, which goes to show that the rest of the worst list are far, far worse in my opinion. This is definitely a boring episode, it's definitely a very weak episode, and whilst there is obviously one decent fight in this, and one relatively decent robot, and Evil Weevil itself is not too bad, but it really didn't have the greatest uh, impact to get to the semi-final, you know, compared to a lot of the other robots which fought a lot more mean and machines or were extremely destructive or flippable. Um, Evil Wheel just doesn't feel like it did much to get to its semi-final place, and that's saying a lot considering that one of the other semi-finalists is Blade, and yet Blade felt like it did a whole lot more than this robot. Um, Panzer is also a pretty decent looking robot, I do quite like the look of it, but again, in a heat where most of the robots don't work and it's just not entertaining, it's just hell, it's just awful, awful, awful. It's, Boring as hell. It is boring as hell, and that is the best way to describe Series 3 Heat L. Often there was a stereotype that Series 3 had a lot of weak episodes, a lot of uh, weaker robots, and a lot of robots which just broke down, didn't work, and nothing really felt like it was going anywhere. And Series 3 Heat L is probably that episode that created that stereotype because all those problems that people have with Series 3 is synonymous with this particular episode. This episode is what brings a lot of people's opinions down on Series 3. If you were to take this out, I'm sure the opinions would have been a little bit better, but I digress. Series 3 Heat Hell is to many as one of the worst episodes of Road Wars, and to some, it is the worst episode of Road Wars. It's only number 5 on my list, but that's not to say that it's god awful. And number 5 on the best list is Extreme 1 Episode 13. Extreme 1 in general has a lot of great moments, a lot of great battles, a lot of great competitions. The All-Stars in particular is probably one of the best in 
any all-star competition, honestly. Um, I don't think they ever really reached the brilliance of the Extreme Ones all-star competition. Same goes for the tag team, in fact. I dare say the tag team is probably at its best here, although Extreme 2 is also very, very good. A lot of the competitions just worked really well. The Mayhems were a great way of creating qualifiers for the Annihilators and having the best robots uh, selected in a brutal fashion, mind you. You had brilliance all around. You even had different weight competitions. Series uh, Extreme 1, I should say, Series 1 of Extreme and Episode 13 in particular is beautifully fantastic. Every fight in this is wonderful in its own right and it combinates into one of the best fights in the entire series. In fact, it's one of the best fights in the world's history. That is the Tag Team Final. Obviously, before that, we have the likes of Panic Attack versus Axel, which is a wonderful fight. Probably the best of the wild card fights. Sure, none of the wild cards won, but this one was probably the best action. And obviously, the tactics or that Panic Attack deployed, where it just slammed in, managed to hook on to Axel and just drive it into the pit. It's wonderfully driven, wonderfully smart in every sense of the word. Um, you also have the rather hilarious fight in the uh, featherweight battle, which was Beefkick versus uh, RC Warrior, which is a wonderful fight. Sure, the fight itself is just two robots shoving into each other, but what makes it such a great fight is the house robots just attacking, and especially Sir Killrock, just pancaking Beefcake is wonderful. Obviously, everything builds up to the greatest fight of them all, which is the tag team final. Diotor and Pussycat versus Suicide Tendencies and the Steel Avenger, one of the best fights in the entire series, probably one of the best fights of all time. It is action-packed from beginning to end, and it has everything. It has everything. You know, you have Pussycat at first being pushed on the uh, back end by Suicide Tendencies, and it's crushing down, it's pushing against Pussycat. Diotor, on the other hand, is dominating Steel Avenger, sort of a revenge, well, not really vengeance at all from Series 3, but really just showing that Despite all these years, Diotor still beats Steel Avenger. But there's this one moment which I've said before, which I really love, and that's the moment where Pussycat, as it's being pushed against the sidewall by uh, Suicide Tendencies, it then all of a sudden gets some power and just pushes back. And you see the claw of Suicide Tendencies actually snap off. Uh, well, the tip of it, it snaps off, and he just pushes back, and you start to see Pussycat start dominating. Suicide Tendencies afterwards. It is a fantastic fight. It is wonderful in every sense of the word. It is brilliant. It is memorable. And this whole episode is memorable. It has great fight after great fight. Probably the weakest element I probably would argue is the Tornado versus Chaos 2 fight. But even then, that's a brilliant fight in it on its own. Um, obviously, it's not as good as the All-Stars battle from the previous episode, which was one of the best. <laughs> um, but still, really great fight. Each fight felt unique. Each fight felt wonderful. Each fight was brilliant and brutal. This episode is what you want from Extreme and it did so in style and beauty. This is one of the best fights, one of the best, one of the best episodes in my opinion. One that I also had recorded on VHS and so I used to rewatch it over and over again because I love this episode so much. It is wonderful. Absolutely brilliant. Top tier for sure. The Annihilators are meant to be one of the best type of episodes you can see. So how the hell do you fuck up an Annihilator like this? Series 7 Annihilator is definitely the worst Annihilator by far. Sure, the Nickelodeon Annihilator probably comes a close second, but at least the Nickelodeon Annihilator is so bad it can be quite funny sometimes, especially the final battle which is actually entertaining. This Annihilator has nothing. One of the best fight of this entire episode is not an Annihilator fight, but rather a House Robot Rebellion, and you know you've done poorly in your choices of picking out which robots to fight in an Annihilator. Now, what we have here is basically a bunch of flippers and one claw robot, and a bunch of robots who just don't work. I remember a while ago, um, on the Robot Wiki, there was a uh, admin, and I know which admin this is. He is a huge fan of Series 7. Even he said this was a fundamentally wrong episode because it is. Robo Chicken enters the arena without a head and gets taken out straight away. Not really entertaining. You then have just Flipper not working at all and somehow being let through. You have Can Opener and Ripper just kind of just dawdling with each other and it's not very entertaining. In fact, none of this is entertaining in the slightest. 
it is a painfully boring episode in every sense of the word, and none of the robots felt interesting. Why bring Canon Opener back again? I mean, why not have a different set of robots? Why not have a varied set of robots? You know, an actual robot, like saw, and a, a, an actual robot, anything like that. Why have it just a bunch of flippers and a one claw robot? It, it makes no sense. There's a reason why other Annihilators are considered really, really good and one of the best in the series that they're from, one of the best in general, um, because they had a diversity of robots. Super Summon Annihilator doesn't have that diversity. As a result, it suffers massively. None of the robots end up working properly and you end up losing some robots because they just don't work at all. It is a painfully boring episode with very unlikable robots in general. Maybe RoboChicken, RoboChicken gets taken out straight away so there's no fun in that. It is boring. And when you consider the fact that the only highlight from this episode, the only thing that people remember from the Annihilator is the House Robot Rebellion, then you know you fucked up big time. This is one of the worst episodes by far, one of the worst, you know, I wouldn't even want to call it an Annihilator, I just call it just filler. That's what it is, it's just filler. Awful, awful, awful. Let me get that stain out of my mouth from that previous Annihilator. Here we have another Annihilator, but this Annihilator is 100% one of the best. This is the Northern Annihilator, the first ever Annihilator shown on Robot Wars, and to a lot of people, one of the best episodes of all time. Hell, even McPlus considers this one of the best episodes of all time. This is chaos. <laughs> I guess it's the best way to describe it. It is absolute pandemonium from beginning to end. It is all sorts of chaotic fights, one after the other. Every robot just smashing into each other, not really paying any attention to how well they're doing. They're just destroying one another. It is beautiful. It is also another Annihilator that subverts your expectations. You know, you expect Chaos 2, for example, to win the Annihilator. He gets knocked out in round one. Stinger, who's also a grand finalist in Series 4, who ends up losing in round two after being knocked out in one hit by Dominator. Dominator itself shows its true might by just axing away at all the competition. Kill Hurts on the other hand gets bullied in every round and it's hilarious that this thing manages to get to like the top three. Um, so it's other tendencies was kind of disappointing I won't lie but it's still wonderful. And then there's Spikosaurus the round one dropout. The one that no one expected to win. Yes, yeah, Spikosaurus is journey in this is getting battered, beaten, just running about aimlessly, smashing into other robots, and then all of a sudden, it wins. Especially against Dominator, where it's just flattened by a, like a pancake. It is a wonderful, wonderful episode, this. You know, each fight is chaotic. Each fight is hyper. Each fight has unpredictability written all over it. This is what the Series 7 Annihilator lacked. Everything felt predictable in the Series 7 Annihilator. You knew where things were gonna go, you know, and it lacked that diversity of robots. This one has axes, this one has axle bots, this one has flippers, this one has, you know, <laughs> Rambot. It is just all out anarchy. And that's what Annihilator should feel like. Complete and utter anarchy, complete chaos in the arena. Something that doesn't seem like it makes any sense, but you you know, it's just enjoyable to watch nonetheless. And it has a great story to it as well, if you think about it in the storytelling department. You know, Spikosaurus, this unlikely hero, managing to get all the way to the final and beating the dominative dominator who has been truly magnificent in this annihilator and somehow losing in the final hurdle despite being the favourites. Wonderful episode. Into the top three worst now and series 9D. What a dreadful episode. Now series 9 in my opinion is the worst UK series by a long shot. At least series 2 had some decency in it. At least had Cassie's, at least had Pact, at K Electron and all that. These had some great moments and great episodes. Series 9 on the other hand barely had any good episodes. There were maybe a few highlights here and there but for the most part series 9 was just dreadful. And it's no wonder that this series is probably the series that killed off the reboot era of Robots, especially because of the fact that, well, as I've mentioned before, it barely tried to fix the problems that Series 8 had and instead made them exponentially worse. And in Series 9's case, here's an episode where, if I were to tell you what robots are in this, you might think, wow, this is going to be amazing. It has Supernova, Crustacean returning, uh, Polzar, Ironhide free. 
I'm side free, I meant. You know, it has Apex. It has the successor, arguably successor, to Smitzy, High Five. You have all these wonderful robots. And what you get is an episode where a fight, for the most part, lasts maybe a second. This is one of the problems I have with, you know, modern robots these days in combat scene is the overabundance of spinners. Yes, spinners are very powerful, very amazing, but a part of me feels like if, if robots is to come back, there will need to be a limit to spinners, like a spinner limit, <laughs> even flipper limit, you know, I agree with you because this is what happens when you have a bunch of spinners, you send them in the arena and nothing really happens because most spinners will break upon impact. It's just a fact, you know. Um, and this episode proves it. You know, most of the fights don't last for very long. Um, there's also the controversy regarding Crustacean and Apex who were told by the producers to hold back. And so when 3, 2, 1, Activate went, they were told to just not go and the competition went in and just smashed into pieces, meaning they didn't even have a fair fight. Good job. Um, <laughs> you know, not any of these fights are in interesting or entertaining. You know, you think Worm versus, you know, Ironside or Polzar would be at least somewhat entertaining, but no, Polzar is an unreliable mess that doesn't really know how to focus its robot properly. You have Supernova, who does brilliantly at first, and its battle against Frostbite, I will admit, is wonderful. It reminded me a lot of the uh, Splinter versus Hypnotist fight of old, which is fantastic but this fight ends up crucifying poor supernova because it breaks basically after this fight the chain breaks and from this point on it just doesn't work you know i guess seeing ironside and team mouse for that matter get into the grand final is wonderful but my god it is just painfully boring at the same time you know you don't really have anything entertaining to see oh but there's loud big hits so what if a fight lasts like a second, it's going to go one or two ways. It's either a really spectacular, you know, one hit KO or flip out the arena, uh, similar to that of Gravity versus uh, Dan Tomkyo or uh, D versus Kaduna Machina. Or you get fights like this where it's just one hit and they just die. And both robots seem to struggle to move. It's so boring and it even highlights the major problem which the Vandalorum format had which by the way Vandalorum format never bring back it is awful it's all just just why can't why can't they just use a regular knockout you know why, why is it so hard oh but we want to be fair well you know it was fair previously <laughs> you know no one complained about that um in fact, I dare say it's worse letting robots fight multiple times despite being in a crippled condition. Uh, but yeah, the round robin format is highlighted that it's probably it's worse here because it just each robot is struggling to move by the end of it and each fight just gets progressively worse by the point that you want this episode just to end. You know, it, that's the worst part. If you want an episode to end like sooner rather than later, then you've really fucked up. And that's really what I see from Series 9 Heat D, an episode that makes you want it to end like sooner, but instead just keep going and going and going and going, and it drives you insane. Awful, awful heat. And to make matters worse, it is a heat which on paper, if you were to say out loud, oh wow, that sounds really interesting, it sounds really deadly. And I remember people getting excited for this heat and then it aired and then the realization hit, this is gonna be awful. It's an awful heat from a very awful series. And number three, the third best episode in my opinion, is the first World Championship. Similar to what I think of extreme, uh, what of uh, All Stars, I should say, you know, global All Stars. I feel like the first time they did it round was probably the best way they did it, whereas other times it just kind of lacked a bit. And with the first World Championship, I feel like it's the same thing. The first time they did it, it was, you know, they hit gold straight away, you know. Lightning struck, it was wonderful. You know, I, I feel like, you know, I know a lot of people 
prefer melees, and melees are definitely better in my opinion, I do like melees, but when it comes to a competition like this, I feel like the head-to-head -head style is probably better in this case. Um, especially considering you know, how it ended up later on, especially by the third ball championship, which just felt really lacklustre and didn't feel like it was as exciting as this one. But this one had a lot of hype behind it. You can tell there's a lot of hype behind it. Loads of robots from all over the world, you know, mostly from the UK, mind, but still <laughs> uh, from all over the world, battling each other in these head to head competitions, and it is brilliant from beginning to end. Some fights, sure, don't last that long and they're pretty weak, but at the same time, there's a lot of pedigree behind them. You know, Mortis fighting Behemoth, you know, Behemoth manages to beat Mortis, you know, Behemoth who at this point in time had been very unlucky in Series 3. Razor. Definitely, Razor definitely was a surprise by this point because Razor in the series had dropped out in the heats twice. You know, it was knocked out in the second round of Series 2 and knocked out in the second round of Series 3. It, you know, sure, Razor looked sexy, it looked wonderful, but it didn't really do very well. And yet here it was doing perfectly well. It was getting to the final, and the way it did it, it did it in style, and especially the final battle with Beer. Like Probably the best encounter they had with each other. Although, you know, the other encounters are just as good. And then you got Deator, Deator, who, you know, surprised everyone by getting to like the top four. It was a wonderful 101 again, and now I hope that surprised everyone. This episode had a lot of surprises, but it was also really well done at the same time. You know, Chaos 2, the reigning champion, gets defeated in round two. But at the same time, you know, the fights are wonderful, the house robots get into action really well. Um, Everything about this is just wonderful. I mean, you can tell this is a big celebration of Robot Combat in a massive way. And whilst there are some fights which are weaker, certainly, it still celebrates Robot Combat. Every fight felt unique. Every fight felt, you know, interesting. There are, there is one major thing actually that I do dislike, and that's Mauler. So for those who don't know, Mauler was going to be in this, but it was considered too dangerous. And I just feel like that's a massive disappointment. For one thing, why don't they you know, see this beforehand, you know, I'm sure they would have seen all these Battlebox Live shows that had just begun in 1999 and, um, you know, the 90s where was sure they would have seen something, you know, and even then they could have brought in Frenzy, I mean, they brought Frenzy in, you know, in, in Sims 4, so they, you know, they can put something like that in. I don't know, they, they, they should have brought in a different robot if they knew that Morla was going to be too dangerous, quote unquote. Um, that, that is the only major problem that I have with the Morla situation, the Morla controversy. But aside from that, every fight felt unique, every fight felt wonderful, everything felt, you know, epic on a grand scale. Even like fights that you'd probably consider really weak in a regular episode, it still felt epic. Like, that's the thing, you have this feeling of epicness, which is just awesome, to say the very least. Awesome introduction to all these international robots as well. Um, and Razor being, you know, successful for the first time is a great sight to see. And that final battle with Behemoth, it is a tough fight against Behemoth. And it was close to losing, and yet it still fought back. It still came back, and it still crushed and crumpled and battered Behemoth. I also love the ending when you see Mark Fork appear. Mark Fork, for those who don't know, was the guy who created Rebel Wars back in the 90s. He was the one that set up all the US Rebel Wars events. So seeing him there, you know, handing the trophy over to Razor, I think is wonderful. I think he's praising Razor's design, especially because in his eyes, he preferred robots which were more stylist and more beautiful looking compared to the your powerful spinners or something like that, which honestly I kind of agree. I do prefer robots to have a good look as well as being impressive in performance wise. Wonderful episode, you know, obviously my Series 3 bias is definitely showing, but this is the best of the world championships by a long shot. Every fight felt unique, every fight felt great, every, all the robots were unique and interesting as well, that's another thing. Um, and whilst it is definitely simple compared to today's standards, I can't help but love it. Wonderful. That is the best way I can describe the first world championship, except wonderful. So the second worst Robot Wars episode, in my opinion, is another Series 9 episode. Series 9, Heat C. This is the definition of boring. And, you know, I'm going to say this right away. I feel like 4 in the reboot kind of got 
screwed over. It had like the worst episode of series eight, which was uh, Heat B. Had the worst episode of um, series nine, which is this one. The worst episode of series 10, which was Heat E. And the worst of the um, uh, World Series, which was the second episode. You know, 4 seemed like it was cursed, which is rather strange because 4 usually is the best rule in those episodes. Um, but at least with those other episodes, they had quite a bit of quality aside from, you know, being rather lackluster. You know, you had Shockwave in Series 8, you know, the World Series, you had, you know, Tough as Nails, you had uh, Eruption and uh, Big Nipper in particular, definitely. Um, in Series 10, you at least had you know, Magnetar. But with Series 9 Heat C, you don't get any of that. Series 9 Heat C has a lot of returning faces, but it also has a lot of um, newcomers. And these newcomers you'd think would make a smashing success in their first appearance. Concussion sort of does, but then after that it kind of struggles to make any sort of impact. Uh, we see the return of 13 Black Team, uh, this time with um, Heavy Metal, which is a great looking robot, but again, we don't really see much of it, which kind of sucks because it looked like it could have been slightly decent, but in this sort of competition, it's kind of eh. And then we have uh, Expulsion, but that thing basically was kind of fodder, let's be honest. <laughs> um, so there is one positive to this heat. We do get, aside from, you know, some of the interesting designs we get from the robots, uh, the other positive, I guess you could say, is the first the melee is decent. You know, it's not great, but it's decent. You know, the four, Concussion, uh, Chimera 2, and um, who was the other one? Toron, that's right, Toron. Toron debuted in this. Um, but again, it's not brilliant. It's just the best of the worst, I guess you could say. This heat is just painful to watch. Like, it is painful to watch. Like, a lot of people rag on reboot for having some of the worst fights you could imagine in like the whole of robot wars and they are right to an extent you know foxic versus uh, mrsb squared for example uh well foxic in general sucked um and you know <laughs> thankfully we'll the first round in this episode but um then you also have mrsb squared which barely even worked so you know this heat like barely any of the robots really works for one thing and as a result you get robots which are struggling to like move like even an inch like trying to like slightly tap each other maybe you know make an impact uh it's just like you don't like this is one of the problems with the round robin format in my opinion you know at least with the classic era it was a straightforward like knockout championship you know as usual competitions usually are and so you know, you have the first melee, two get eliminated, or, you know, if it was head to head, you get the picture. A row would be eliminated in the first round. Second round, they fight the winners from the previous round. Two more robots go, and then you have the heat final. And it solved a lot of the problems in a very simplified format, and one that, honestly, they pretty much should have kept, in my opinion. Uh, because this is the problem with the round robin format. You have a bunch of robots which slowly but surely struggle to even make any sort of impact, struggle to even do anything because either they've been trashed in the first round or they've had a massive technical fault which has made them a bit more uneasy later on. With a straightforward knockout competition, that problem would have been solved easily. And, you know, not only that, but the winner gets a bit more time to repair their robot for the uh, next uh, stage, whether that be a semi-final or a grand final. Here, on the other hand, you know, the winner still has to fight a bunch of other fights and for the most part will be, you know, just slowly but surely struggling to go through with it. Um, and not only that, but a majority of the round robin fights are boring. Honestly, they're just boring. There's nothing really interesting to talk about they're just boring and in an episode like this where robots are struggling to function and the robots aren't remotely that interesting to begin with you get a very boring episode and with dullness 
you know, at least there are some bad episodes, you know, or some bad, you know, heats or semi-finals or whatever. Even the ones that I've mentioned before, at least they've always had something, I guess, going for them. At least there was some spark of interest here and there. With this one, there's barely anything, and I feel like the worst of thing you can do in any TV show, in any program, whether it's Road Wars, whether it's you know, a competition or what have you, is make something boring. And, you know, this was just painful to watch. Even when I was watching it, you know, not like I didn't watch it live as I went to see it being filmed on like the classic era. Um, but when I was watching on TV, you know, as it was ha- as it was happening, as it was live, you know, well, it was live per se, but you know what I'm saying. Um, when it first aired, it, like, I was just hoping for this episode to end. Like, I just didn't care by the end of it. I didn't care who won. I didn't care who got to the grand final. I was like, who cares? This is just painful to watch. And none of these robots feel like they're deserving of it, really. Um, and, you know, it's kind of funny and tragic in a way that the one that does get into the grand final concussion basically gets knocked out straight away in the grand final in, like, one hit. So, you know... <laughs> The, the other issues this episode also has, aside from the robots barely working, the arena. Um, a lot of people point this out, but the arena was basically broken by this point. Um, now, the classic era did have an issue sometimes where the pit would be like raised or lowered in like an awkward manner, which meant the robots would occasionally get stuck. Um, but, you know, it was very rare for that to happen. With this arena on the other hand, You'd think with a bigger budget and better, you know, facilities and whatever, you'd think they'd be more prepared for such an issue, but they weren't. And the pit was lowered in such a way that it, you know, Matilda got stuck, Concussion got stuck, Four got stuck, I think Dead Metal even got stuck. So once again, you know, you have the arena going against the robots. Um, geez, like, one. The most memorable thing people remember from this particular episode is the arena being broken. You know you haven't done a good job. (laughs) And I get it, you know, this is unlike, you know, say, Kimmy vs. Spenny, which I did a list beforehand, you know, where, you know, you can at least edit and script the thing to be a bit more entertaining in a way. And when it goes horribly wrong, well, like, you know, Got to try and salvage what you can. With Road Wars, obviously, the problem is it is a competition, so of course, not everything is going to be as explosive, as entertaining as can be. But at the same time, you know, it could have done a better job of like moving certain robots about. You know, have this robot here and this robot in this heat. It could have like done something about the format. They could have done something about that arena flipper, uh, not flipper, pit being you know at a disadvantage they had all these other elements that also contribute to its failure in a way um yeah like heat c is just awful like absolutely awful and like it's not just awful in like okay it kind of sucks like for like most of it and there's one or two good things no it's awful in the sense that it's boring and that for me makes it far worse than like some of the other ones beforehand you know at least with the series summon annihilator you had the house robot rebellion which was fun as hell at least with you know heat l of series three you had the wild willy fight <laughs> that was funny at least with series five semi-final two you had the pussycat you know but well, both pussycat fights being pretty decent you know at least with nickelodeon u.s championship well, actually, I don't know about that one. <laughs> um, but, like, at least there was something going for it in a lot of these previous bad entries. With this one, it's just boring. Like, there's, it's just tiresome. And you just want it to end, and that's not something you should feel when you're watching what is robot fighting each other. You know, it's... It's boring. I guess is the best way to describe this. Boring, boring, boring. So, on the flip side, whereas we had the really boring Heat C as our second worst, the, the second best. Now, admittedly, first and second for this, best Robo Wars episodes, I feel are kind of interchangeable. 
And the reason why I say they're kind of interchangeable is because they're both so, like, 10 out of 10. There's nothing bad about them whatsoever. Like, it's really hard to say, well, this one's slightly worse than this one. This one's slightly worse than that one. Like, the only reason why this one I decided to be make second in the end was only because we are technically missing a fight. <laughs> Uh, well, I mean, technically we're missing a fight in both my like number one and my second one, but in this one it's a bit more obvious. Uh, but there's also an understandable reason why. So, for the second best, if the images on the screen haven't already given it away, is the Series 4 Grand Final. The 4th Wars Grand Final is perfection. Like, it genuinely is perfection. And the reason why I said it's missing a fight is because it doesn't have a third place payoff. And the reason why it doesn't is. Well, it's kind of obvious if you've seen the episode. Uh, Pussycat sniped um, Hypnodisc's wheel and then Shunt basically destroyed the flywheel, which meant that it was completely destroyed in that fight. Um, it was probably the worst like damage from Hypnodisc it ever suffered. Um, but that doesn't take away from the fact that this is just quality after quality after quality like series 3 grand final was also a really good one and i'd probably say that would be my top 15. um series 10's grand final obviously was in this top 10 list that is brilliant as well but this is the best grand final by a long shot now we have four absolutely fantastic machines and you know they're all varied as well you know you have pussycat which is a very odd looking robot but it's also got a little cutting disc Former Grand Finalist with Body Hammer from Series 1. Um, Hypnodisc, former Grand Finalist from Series 3. New and improved, probably the most destructive, most powerful of the Hypnodisc machines. Chaos 2, reigning champion, is doing really well again. It hasn't really mu much of a you know fight until this Grand Final. And Stinger, which is like sort of the outlier in this uh, series, but really aggressive, really unique, and again, a tricky robot to deal with. And in a fight, in a grand final like this, where you have such great robots, you get such great battles. Hitman Disc versus Persecat is such a shocking fight because you think the gigantic flywheel of Hitman Disc and the exposed wheels of Persecat, and not only that, but Hitman Disc in Series 4 was a beast. It was just brutal. It destroyed robots, it tore batteries out and just smashed the batteries in front of them. Like, Hitman Disc in Series 4 was a beast like series 4's hypnodisc is probably the best of the hypnodisc machines as i've said already but pussycat comes along and straight away aims for the back wheel and it is so quick and it is so fast and it snipes the wheel the wheel is broken immediately and it's shocking you know it's shocking we're, we're, we're anticipating this great fight or rematch between chaos 2 and hypnodisc and look what happens to hypnodisc and then Shunt just delivers that axe bow and it just breaks the wheel. It is the flywheel, I should say. It is devastating of a blow. One of the best attacks from a house robot by a long shot. One of the best you know, highlights, certainly. Um, and then even Chaos 2 versus Stinger, which on paper looks like it's going to be a very easy match. All the Chaos 2 has to do is flip this axle bot, this whack bot, and that's it. But no, Stinger puts up a, a big fight. Like, it smashes the back end of Chaos 2. Chaos 2 is struggling to keep up with Stinger. Stinger is so all over the place, so slippery, so, you know, well, uh, such a pain in the ass. But Chaos 2 struggles, and this is like the first major time that we see Chaos 2 struggle in the entirety of this championship. You know, Chaos 2 has done really well, and then all of a sudden it's suffering badly. It obviously wins on a judge's decision, but you know, there was a chance it could have lost. And then we have the grand final itself, which for me, I've ranked as probably one of the greatest fights, if not the greatest battle in World War's history. Chaos 2 versus Pussycat is perfection in every sense of the word. You know, it's not just the fight itself that's brilliant, but also the cinematography of it. You see the way, you know, the cameras are placed in such a way that you see full on Chaos who's just flipping, you know, Pussycat up and down all over the place. And it is wonderful. Pussycat keeps coming in and it causes tremendous damage to uh, Chaos 2. And it is a brutal fight. Both robots are at each other's 
trumps in this fight. This is such a devastating battle. And as the fight continues, it becomes a little bit slower, but that doesn't take away from the grittiness. That doesn't take away from the tension because both robots have done so well. And it is, you know, oh, it's edge of your seat entertainment. This is the best like title fight ever. You know, Carbide versus Eruption for Series 10 does come close, don't get me wrong. But this one, 100% the best title fight ever in Robo Wars history. And it is the greatest grand final in my opinion. The way they are both at each other's throats, the way they both are slugging it out and they're still quite tired near towards the end. They're basically ramming each other by the end of it, but they're still trying their best to just get that blow in that can somehow win the championship. They don't. It goes to a judge's decision. And after all that excitement, Chaos 2 wins the championship, being the only UK champion to win consecutively, uh, winning both Series 3 and 4 at the same time. Kind of says a lot when they're both the best grand finals. <laughs> um, like, seriously, what a fantastic episode. Even like the highlights, you know, which they did in the reward ceremony, I think was also really well done. Like, everything about this grand final is brilliant. And what makes it even better is that you have you go into this grand final having watched series three and four, you have an expectation it's gonna go, you know, hopefully, or presumably with Chaos 2 and Hip Disc fighting each other at the end. And it doesn't. And instead, you know, Chaos 2 struggles and Hit the Disc gets just brutalized. And, you know, these two very unique robots and Pussycat and Stinger, they put up a massive, you know, fight. So much so that, you know, the reigning champion, reigning winners up, struggled. And Chaos 2 is forced to defend its championship. It is forced to defend its title in such a way that you know, it feels earned by the end of it. After that decision, it feels earned, especially against that pussycat fight, which is just gorgeous. And the visuals, obviously, as I mentioned earlier, the cinematography of this episode is like top notch. Like, it's shocking how top notch it is. Like, series four in general is like the best looking series. Like, the lighting, the like industrial setting, and everything about it was like great. It was brilliantly done. Like, I don't know why they went a little bit overboard afterwards. Oh, they didn't really go back to it in the reboot. Like, <laughs> they had perfection right here. So, yes, the grand final is only second because there is one episode which I found even better. But that's not to say that this isn't just perfection. And finally, the worst Robot Wars episode. And... You know, if you've seen every episode of Robot Wars, including the Fallen series, including, you know, all those extra bits, like the history of this third world, which basically is in the grand final anyway, so it's not really special. Um, and or, you know, know the history of Robot Wars, such as the 90s events. I'm fairly sure you all will come up to the same agreement if you have seen the German Robot Wars, in particular, Heat A. I, I wrote this in my blog once upon a time. I was ranking all the heat A's and I ranked this as dead last in that. Because I and I remember I said, you know, the German Robots, they wanted to have a series back when uh, Extreme One was being filmed, which is why you got a lot of German robots there. They didn't have enough competitors, they couldn't do it. They tried doing it again, again, not enough competitors not enough interest. They finally had enough robots by the time Extreme 2 slash Series 6 or near the end of Series 6. <laughs> and a part of me feels like they just shouldn't have bothered. But the Germans shouldn't have bothered having a series. <laughs> you know, sure you had Black Hole. I guess that's great. You know, Black Hole is great. But, you know, this is Heat A. Black Hole isn't in this. Instead we have... <sighs> Like, I, I'm sort of chuckling to myself because I am baffled by how, like, how they could have thought this was acceptable for TV. Like, it, they, like, why didn't they start off with Heat B as Heat A and then have this as Heat B? Because at least then, you know, they would have gone, 
a decent amount of viewers, at least people who had been interested in Oh, okay, they would be disappointed the second time around, but you have the grand final to look forward to. This is just shit in every sense of the word. So for those that don't know what happens at Hite of German Robot Wars, um, nothing happens. Um, and I, I kid you not when I say this, every fight, every robot is immobilized from the start and or just not working at all. Like it's just turning slightly. This is a heat so bad that none of the robots work. And I'm laughing right now, but imagine sitting through and deciding to, you know what, I'm gonna watch the foreign robots because I haven't watched them properly. You know, I've heard about them. And imagine sitting down, having watched the US robots, which is good enough. The Dutch walls, which again, good enough. And then watching this abomination, like I'd be embarrassed to even show my face if I appeared on TV and this was my appearance on TV. You know, this is, <laughs> a part of me feels like they just shouldn't have bothered. They shouldn't have bothered. They should have just turned off the cameras. They should have just said, you know what? Let's just cancel this. <laughs> You know, let's just let's have like a German special in like stream two, have them all fight there. But no, we had to have a series, a series which is comprised of only three episodes, by the way. And this is one of the three episodes. Like, at least he being the grand final are decent. At least they have great fights. At least they have great robots. This one had barely any good robots in it. <laughs> you know, this is just shit. Like this genuinely is just shit. I like, it's hard to even describe like how bad of a fuck up this episode is. Like, I feel like you need to watch it to believe what I'm saying. When I say that none of the robots worked, every battle is basically dead robots standing <laughs> on all sides, on all fronts. Um, like, I guess the best highlight, um, the best highlight, I guess, is... Uh, uh, I guess it'd be the Fulgrim getting destroyed by Matilda. Like, that, that's at least entertaining. Fuck me, this was awful. <laughs> this is, like, this is genuinely just... This is just awful. Absolutely awful. And I'm shocked that they thought this would be good television. I'm shocked that they thought they could get away with this. I'm shocked that they thought, you know, despite fucking up several times with their German rules attempt. Like, by this point, I would just give up because there was clearly no point. There was clearly no ambition. <laughs> like, it is awful. Like, genuinely awful. At least with the other episodes that I've ranked on my worst list, at least the robots functioned to an extent. At least there was fights. Not robots just standing still, doing nothing, and letting the house robots just come in to give them a push and see which one basically died first. <laughs> like, it is shocking how this was even, like, conceived as, like, a good idea and to air on TV. You know... As I said, like, why didn't they swap these episodes around? At least then they could have had a bit of success, but no, they, they, they wanted to show this. <laughs> I mean, there was no point in doing this German Road Wars anyway, because there was only three episodes, two heats and a grand final. Like, man. <laughs> this is one of those things that you have to see to believe to know how bad it is. You know, maybe the pictures on the screen make it seem more exciting than it actually is. It, it really isn't. Oh, I'm telling you right now, it fucking isn't. <laughs> it's, it's awful. It is genuinely awful. Like, I'd always say just skip the German rules entirely. There's no point. Or at least, you know, if you really are desperate to see how good Black Hole is, watch the Black Hole fights, a completion of that maybe. Just, like, just don't even bother watching this episode. <laughs> you know. 
I don't think any of these robots even get in. Well, they do go, some of them go to the grand final, but I don't think any of them actually, you know, make any progress. They get knocked out straight away, so it's even pointless to watch. Um, yeah. This is genuinely the worst episode of Robots. This is objectively the worst episode of Robots because there's no robots functioning. There's no, there's nothing to it. There's no real fights in it. There's nothing. You know, it sucks. <laughs> it just sucks. But at least we got the number one best next. Now, the fourth world's grand final as I said, is interchangeable with this episode, which is another Series 4 episode, The Southern Annihilator. This is the best episode, in my opinion, the greatest episode, in my opinion. To a lot of people, maybe a very obvious choice. To some, maybe an overrated choice. I don't care. This is just this is just perfection, let's be perfectly honest. Like the Series 4 Grand Final, it is missing a fight because Beat Him Off does drop out, but where is... I got a little bit mad with the Series 7 Annihilator and I did get a little bit upset with the uh, other Extreme 1 Annihilator for having robots drop out. Like, at least, in this case, it's understandable, at least Beomorph still had some brilliant highlights. Like, every robot in this Annihilator has brilliant highlights. Even Kamigeto X, which lasts like 10 seconds, has some decent highlights in it with an axe, like, literally impaling Razor, which is actually pretty impressive. Um, <clears throat> But this, like, this is not as chaotic as the other Annihilator, the Northern Annihilator, but it is still mayhem, pure mayhem. Onslaught gets a chance to appear in Series 4 after withdrawing from the main competition. And, you know, we get a great set of robots. Onslaught, uh, Vercingetorix, Razor, Behemoth, uh, Attila the Drum, and Spawn of Scutter. Great set of robots from the get-go. Very diverse range. I like that. I like diversity in my robot rules. I like seeing different types of robots. And, you know, Razor from the get-go looks like it's going to win. And obviously it does win. But like with the Series 4 Grand Final, it doesn't necessarily get the win easily. It has to earn that win. And it does. First two rounds, Razor is just being battered and beaten. It is being chucked all over the place, you know, Spawn Sky and um, <laughs> Behemoth gang up on Razor the first two battles. Um, in the third round, when it's Attila the Drum on Sword and Razor, Razor just gets battered by Attila the Drum and is unable to really do anything. Like, the side of Razor literally gets indented. Uh, Razor itself does do a brilliant job taking out Versing Gatorix and Spawn Sky and even Behemoth for that matter. Um, but it still had to earn that. <laughs> you know, it still had to earn those kills. Uh, the attacks Razor does as well. That's, that's another thing. Razor manages to crush Behemoth upside down. Like, I, I, I like... <laughs> it is beautiful to witness seeing Razor literally upside down killing Behemoth. It's, it is one of those things that you look at and you think, wow, like, that is brilliant. Um, but I digress. Like, this, this Annihilator, from beginning to end, is just a joyride. Every fight is fantastic. Every robot is fantastic. Every robot has a moment of where it shines. You know, Onslaught is this nippy little thing that constantly is, like, attacking every other robot, filming them over. It's being this nuisance. Behemoth, you know, tackling Razor and facing it head on, you know, Spawn of Skirt, sending Onslaught flying and sending even Versing Garrix and Razor flying as well. That spike. Um, Versing Garrix getting the axe hit on Razor very early on and then getting killed off very quickly, mind. <laughs> and Attila the Drum, sort of the unsung hero of this competition, just spinning around madly, doing all sorts of wild crap and just battering the competition <laughs> and even damaging Razor like giving Razor a bit of a fright, actually. The house robots as well. And I know, I will get to that. You know, Sir Killer almost sending a little drum out of the arena. It's probably the first time he ever did something like that. You know, Sergeant Bash. It, like, did, all these house robots do such a wonderful moment. Have this wonderful moment of shining. 
especially Matilda. <laughs> My God, this final is perhaps one of the most famous Robot Wars battles in history. Razor versus Onslaught, the final of this Annihilator, and holy shit, is it beautiful. Like, Razor is sort of on the back foot a bit because Onslaught is so quick and so thin and skinny, and Razor, its crushing power hasn't been really effective in this Annihilator. Like, sort of still rearing from the damage that Pussycat inflicted on it. You can still see the scars on the back side of it, near the sides. Um, but that doesn't matter because Razor, you know, it's chasing after Onslaught. It tears the tire, which is beautiful. Seeing Onslaught like this tire roll away as it's being torn off, gets a grip. Uh, and then all of a sudden Onslaught gets taken out by Matilda, which to a normal fight, this would be an anticlimax. <laughs> But then, <laughs> then, Razor decides to attack Matilda. Now, I could ruin everything and say that, technically speaking, behind the scenes, there was an agreement to get Matilda to be thrashed for a bit of fun because they were already, like, creating the new improved Matilda for Extreme 1 and Series 5. But let's not be a killjoy because this is beautiful. Like, the destruction of Matilda is wonderful to see <laughs> and the commentary from jonathan pierce as well the way he is wheezing and can't stop laughing because you can't razor destroys matilda and it is brutal it's brilliant it's wonderful and it is a perfect celebration it, it almost like it's almost vengeance for stealing razor's kill by getting rid of the onslaught so anticlimactically um and the house robots are coming in to try and protect Matilda and then, you know, somehow Simon Bash gets locked on to Matilda and drives her along. That's wonderful. You know, Dead Metal on the other hand is just playing with the carcass of uh, Onslaught and just slicing it apart and dumps it in the pit. But that doesn't really matter because you've got Razor killing off Matilda, setting her on fire as well, putting her on the flame pit. So Killalot coming along, trying to like stop Razor and yeah. Like this is just... It is just unadulterated brutality and I love it. <laughs> but obviously with that final battle aside, as I've mentioned, every fight in this was wonderful and Razor's win of this Annihilator is earned. Like it doesn't just win because it's the best robot in the field, no, because in the previous fights it was struggling. It was being attacked from all corners. It was struggling to get a grip on some of the robots, you know. It won because it got that lucky grip and managed to get that kill. And even then, you got Onslaught, which is a deserving runners-up. And hell, if things went a little bit more seriously in the final, I'd argue Onslaught could have had a chance to beat Razor. I don't think it would have, but <laughs> there was a chance. You know, Onslaught being really good, and it makes you wish that Onslaught worked in the eight main championship. It really does, because Onslaught was really, really good in this. Um... Like, every robot in this, like, is brilliant. Like, as I've said, like, every robot has a moment to shine. First and Garrix, maybe less so, but it still had that moment where it still got that axe hit on Razor, which leaves, like, a mark for the rest of the Annihilator. This is what an Annihilator should be. Complete Annihilation. Unadulterated insanity, but also brilliant, brutal fun. And, you know, just like the Series 4 Grand Final, every fight in this is great. The storytelling is great i guess you could say if you think about it in that sense razor earned its win just like kelsey earned its win this is brilliant absolutely brilliant and deserving in my opinion of the greatest episode of Rogue wars and to a lot of people it is it is the best episode in Rogue wars history for a very reason because it is fantastic it is just fantastic it is memorable it's wonderful every robot is great in it it is brilliant in every sense of the word. And so, the Southern Annihilator is the best battle in my opinion. Hope you enjoyed this top 10 best and worst list. And I'll see you whenever I do next time. <laughs>